Okay, so it is November 4th and Wednesday, and this is for Regional Cuisine. Um, today we're going to be focusing on a recipe out of Louisiana, which is a Creole shrimp. So in your Google Classroom, you have the recipe for Emerald Lagasse's Creole shrimp, and it will be posted in with the video um, later when it gets uploaded. So I am only doing a half a recipe of this today just because it makes so much, and I have to do this again next period. So everything that I do is going to be half the amounts that you're going to see on the recipe that you have. Um, but you can easily make this a bigger batch, or you can even make this a double batch if you want to feed more people in your family. Okay. So I've got a couple things set up here already. I've got my cast iron pan, so just a 10 inch cast iron. You could use a non stick skillet for this. I've got a wooden spoon for stirring on my little um, butane burner, right? Ready to go. And what I'm going to do first is just throw in a half a stick of butter, right? So four tablespoons worth of butter. This is not a um, thing where we're going to worry about the fat content with this, right? So if it is a full recipe, it's a full stick of butter, okay? And then we're going to start cutting some veggies. So I'm just going to turn this burner on very low just to start getting that butter melted. Okay. And I'm going to start with um, what we call the trinity in Creole cuisine, right? Which is onion, celery, and green bell pepper. Okay. So now with these, I'm going to need about a cup of chopped onion. So medium-sized onion is fine. I'm going to use the whole thing. Okay. And then stick of celery, and I'm going to use about a quarter of the green pepper, right? Because I only need a half a cup of the pepper and a half a cup of the celery. So with the onions, keep that root end attached as you're cutting, okay? This is the bottom, the way it grows. The stem end, we're going to trim off, all right? Upside down. You'll see this quite a bit anytime we use onions, right? I'm going to cut straight through that root, but keeping that attached, and then peel this. And we're going to do just, you know, a rough, rough dice. doesn't have to be super fine. Um, this is going to have some time to saute as we go. All right. Um, we're, the thing that you want to know about with Creole cuisine, I've got my trash right here I'm putting this into, is that um, Creole food is layers of flavor, right? It is spicy, typically, right? Many of the dishes are spicy. But it is not about burn your mouth hot spicy, right? It is about adding layers of spice, layers of heat, and flavor with that. Okay. So you're going to see a lot of ingredients go into this recipe today. So this is one that you'd want to have plenty of time to, you know, plan ahead so you can get everything chopped and ready to go, right? My butter's just slowly melting in the pan. I've got that root end here on the onion. I'm just going to cut in about a 45 degree angle, right, with my fingers on top so that I can put a slice in there. And then I'm going to make some slices this way, still keeping that root attached. Okay. So this way it doesn't fall apart, but it opens it up like a flower. Okay. And when you're cutting onions, breathe through your mouth. Okay. So then that way you're not breathing in the fumes straight up to your sinuses. All right. When you get near the end, just trim that out. And the pieces are too big. Give it a little quick rough chop. Right. So it's nothing super fine or anything like that. A nice rough chop. All right. So a little slice there. And slice this way. And this is just so I can make my dice pieces and then cut across the front again. So then that way we get our dice. Right. This piece there. And there's our onion. So I'm going to put this into the pan, all right, and then we're going to work on the celery. So in traditional French cuisine, you will see a lot of recipes start with uh, onions, celery, carrots, right, where Creole cuisine swaps out for the green pepper, okay? So this has been washed. I'm just going to trim off the end of the celery. This one's already been mostly trimmed. But it's a little dry. All right, I'm going to cut this into some more manageable pieces. And I don't want giant pieces of celery, so I'm just going to cut this down lengthwise, right, to make this a little bit more manageable size piece. Right? Now, when you're chopping, this knife stays on the board, right, the tip, and it goes up and down. You can keep your fingers further away if you're really nervous as you get better at it, right, you go a little bit closer. And what I'm doing is feeding that celery into the knife, 
right? You guys can check out the uh, Science of Cooking Knife Skills video for some more cutting tips. Okay. So we're just going to cut all this up. Like I said, just small, dice sized pieces, similar to what we had with the onions, right? So we end up with about a half a cup. And this is going to go into the pan with the butter. Like I said, I have this on very low heat right now, um, just so I have time to cut, and then I'll put the heat up a little bit more to get some color. Now, this is a really big bell pepper. So I'm just going to cut a section off of this because I only need about a half a cup. So I've got my stem up here. I'm just going to slice down and around. That's the side. Make sure to take out any of those seeds. Okay. You don't want to have any seeds lingering in there. And this is just a sweet pepper. We're going to have spice coming into this recipe um, in some other ways. So now I'm going to cut this pepper into some strips. It's going to make it easier to chop. Okay. You can hear my pan starting to sizzle a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then same thing, about the same size as the onion for the green pepper. Okay. And that makes your trinity, right? The celery, the onions, and the bell pepper, right? And you will see this in many Creole recipes. Um, you know, gumbo and etouffee and things like that, right? Slice, chop these all up. Now, what I'm trying to do with the veggies is just sweat them a little bit, right? Get them a little bit soft. They're going to have plenty of time to cook while I'm adding all the other layers of flavor and seasonings and spices and things like that. Okay. So scrape that right into the pan. Okay. Let's see up here. I've just got this going. I'm putting a lot of flavor into here. Now that I have all three things in the pan, I'm going to turn this heat up just a little bit. About a medium. If it starts cooking too fast, turn your heat down, right? Don't um, overdo it, okay? So now into this is going to go a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. You can use a regular table salt, right? So a nice level spoonful. And what that's going to do for the veggies is it's going to help draw out some of the moisture out of the onions and the peppers and the celery. Okay. Um, we're also going to add in a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Right? So this is a ground cayenne pepper. So a nice level quarter teaspoon. And this is where we're going to start adding in our layers of spice. Right, So it starts with the cayenne pepper, but we're going to keep building on that. I'm just looking for these to get a little translucent. It's still pretty raw at the moment. All right, so when the onions start to get a little bit see-through is what you're looking for. Okay. I said, this is where you're going to start adding lots of layers of flavor. Okay. I'm also going to throw in a bay leaf, right, just one for flavor. And this is something that you're going to want to pull out later. Right? You don't want anybody chewing on that because it's going to be a little bit on the dry side, but we're just going to extract some flavor out of that bay leaf. We're going to let that cook for a couple of minutes while we're going to chop up some garlic. All right? So with the garlic, I need about a teaspoon and a half, so about a clove. Ends up being about a half a tablespoon, which is what we need. So I'm going to take that garlic clove, and you can do this with a pan, you can do this with your knife, but with a blade away from you, just set it on top, and with a fist, whack it. Right? Peel that garlic off. All your paper comes right off. You don't need no fancy tools, right? That little root end there, I'm just going to trim that off because it's really dried out, okay? Um, and then we're just going to chop this up. So we're just going to give this a little rough chop. If you keep your hand up on top, right? Pulling them together. This is going to have plenty of time to cook down, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Now we've got some heat going here in the saute pan. Okay, in this case, bring you guys this way a little bit. Yeah. All right. My veggies, I can see, are starting to get a little bit translucent. 
They're sizzling good. I'm looking to get a little bit of color on them. Like I said, this is going to have plenty of time to cook down and do its thing. So just give us a minute here. Now, the next set of ingredients are going to go in together, which I've got some diced tomatoes, right? So we need um, eight ounces worth. So about a cup of diced tomatoes. I've got my garlic. We're going to add in some Worcestershire. We're going to add in some hot sauce, right? Um, and then we're going to add in the thickener after, which I'll show you. So now that we've got this in there, I'm going to add the garlic in. I want to extract some of that flavor out. Right, but I didn't want the garlic in too early either, though, because garlic has a tendency to burn if it's cooked too long and gets a little bitter. So I'm just going to let that garlic sweat for a couple of seconds. Adjust my heat down just a little bit. All right, and we're going to add in the diced tomato. So this moisture is going to help finish cooking off. Our veggies okay so we've got our onions our celery our green peppers our garlic cayenne little bay leaf and now our diced tomatoes right so this is going to be our sauce base for this mixture okay and now i'm going to add in some worcestershire sauce right? so we're going to need a half a teaspoon's worth of worcestershire right which is just like this you can use the store brand right whatever you happen to have so just give us a lot of flavor, a little bit of smokiness to it. And then the hot sauce is kind of one of those things to taste. If you like things spicy, you can add more. But I would wait until the dish is completely finished and then add in extra. Because we're also going to be adding one more spice to this, too. It's going to have some heat to it. Okay? So I hate measuring this salt over the bottle. So about 10 good shakes of Tabasco right, as our hot sauce. I'm just going to let this keep steaming down and cooking. Right, we're trying to get rid of some of that water out of the tomatoes. Okay. Now we need to thicken this up a little bit. So we're going to need a little thickening agent, uh, which is just going to be some water and a little bit of flour, right? It's a little bit of all purpose flour. So I got a tablespoon here. And I've got one cup of cold water. Okay. So we're going to mix the two together. So if you were using flour, cornstarch, anything like this, you always want to make sure that the water is cold when you mix them together. And you don't want to just add this straight into. Your hot pan right because if you, i just put flour in there i would just get little lumps of flour and we don't want that right we're not trying to use, lose too much moisture just yet because we still need to saute our shrimp in there as well so we're going to be adding this in and now a little additional liquid okay but whether it's cornstarch or flour right or arrowroot thing any kind of thickener always dissolve in cold water first then add it into your saute pan okay so I'm going to add that in right now. I'm going to speed this along just a little bit for time's sake, right? So I'm going to add that. And then the other part of our liquid is going to be some shrimp stock. Now, if you don't have shrimp stock in the house, broth, things like that, um, you can use a fish stock. You can use a vegetable stock, okay? Something that's kind of on the neutral side would be good. You wouldn't want to use a beef stock because we are going to be putting shrimp in this after, right? So I've got a half a cup of trim stock in. now we're going to get some heat going on this right so we want this to simmer down and make our sauce okay and what's happening right now is it's very kind of neutral color right we want to get this going get some heat on it just for a minute or so now the other part of this is that this dish is going to be served which is traditional with white rice okay so I have the little rice cooker going, um, and that's all set and ready to go. So with rice, medium grain, long grain, white rice, um, just remember and keep in mind that it is one part rice, two parts water, okay? Uh, whether you're doing it in a rice cooker or on the stove, I find a rice cooker is nice and easy, right? Um, it's nothing fancy. You know, this is just a little cheap one, right? You, know, you set it to cook, it switches itself to warm when it's all done, and you don't have to really even think about it, right? Which is the best part. So the other part of this that we're going to add in is a little bit of um, Creole seasoning, right? And you might find this in the stores as a um, Cajun, right? That's fine. This is going to get one and a half teaspoons of 
It's Creole seasoning. That's why I said you want to go careful on the hot sauce. There's our half. Now we're going to add a teaspoon. So it's definitely going to have a lot of spice to this, a lot of flavor. But it's layers of flavor, okay, as you go. So this is bubbling. I'm going to let this cook down for a minute here. Blend the spices in. And we're going to talk about some shrimp. Okay. Now I have here a raw uncooked shrimp. I don't like to buy pre-cooked shrimp because um, if you put pre-cooked shrimp into a dishes, then you're cooking it a second time. Shrimp can tend to get a little bit tough, right? So what you can do is in the store is look for bags of frozen, um, unpeeled, raw shrimp. It's actually going to be cheaper per pound, too, okay? Um, so you'll save some money so you can get more shrimp for your money, which is always a good thing, all right? So what I did already is I peeled a bunch of these, but I want I saved a few to show you here, right? And this is how they come. So you let them defrost in the fridge overnight. Um, you just take the bag and put it into a bowl so in case it leaks any liquid, right? And to peel these, just give them a little pinch inside the curve, right? They're already sliced, they're already deveined. And give them a little squeeze on the tail, and that peel will come right off, right? So just peel that back a little, give it a little pinch, pop the tail out. And so this is a pound of raw shrimp. Right, like I said, all peeled, deveined. This was rinsed in the sink earlier. And that's what's gonna make our protein for this dish, right? Shrimp, you could use crawfish. But we want something that's gonna give us, you know, some good protein source. Okay. So I'm gonna throw the shrimp into the bubbling mixture here, right? And this is bubbling really well and it's getting some nice color. Those veggies are cooking down. Right, so I'm gonna cut back on the heat just a little bit, get it to a nice low simmer because it doesn't really need to be at a boil at this point. So then I'm gonna add in the shrimp. Now, the nice thing is, the shrimp have their own little thermometers, right? So the shrimp are gonna turn pink when they're done, they're only gonna take a few minutes to cook. Okay, but I want to put this in there and let it cook in this liquid because it's gonna soak up all those spices and seasonings. Okay. So those only take a few minutes to do their thing. And the last part of this is to finish it off, right? Um, to have a little something green, right, to go on our dish. Um, something with a little color, so you can use parsley, you can use a little bit of uh, scallions, a little green onion here, right? Um, I already trimmed off the tops. I'm just gonna trim these roots just to get them out of the way because they're a little on the crazy side here. And just gonna slice these up. Make sure to peel off anything that's dried up um, or wilted, so you just have some really nice, clean, crisp green to this, okay? And then with these, just give them a little slice. Okay. So this is going to add a little bit of flavor, but it's also going to be my garnish for the top. Okay. And I'm going to go right down almost to the root. Okay. Side. These shrimp are bubbling away over here. Perfect. So save, you know, you can put some of these green onions right into the dish and then save some for garnish on the top or you can just put them on the top as a garnish, right? And then with parsley, you could use a little fresh parsley. You can use a little bit of dried parsley. Um, that's what I had on hand. So I'm going to use that today. All right, so I want to show you the shrimp here. You can see that they're starting to go from gray, just don't want to drip on my computer, right, to pink, all right? So they have a built-in thermometer. You don't have to tempt them, right? Um, so we're just waiting for them all to turn all the way through. Let this reduce down just a little bit here. We're going to get our plate ready, right? Because you eat with your eyes first. So it is a lot about presentations here. Right, we've got many, many flavors going on here. Um, so I said, so this here has a ton of spice, a ton of seasoning and flavor. It pairs perfectly with a plain white rice. Okay. I just wanted to let this reduce down just a little bit more um, to get a little bit thicker. And the shrimp are almost there, They're just about set. They're starting to curl up, right? Nice and tight, see there, right? And they're turning pink. So it's an instant read thermometer.
but we just want to cook down that liquid just a bit more. All right. So for your plate, when you're doing this, right? Any kind of plate. I like something a little fancy. If I want to go all out and do this much work, might as well use a fancier plate, right? That's the way I see it. So I'm going to take, I'm going to throw a few of these scallions in the pot because I don't want anything to get wasted today because I don't need that many for a garnish. But I've got a little pile here I'm going to save for putting on top. All right. Now with the rice, it's, you know, how much rice do you want to eat, right? How much do you want to eat? So you don't need a lot of rice on the plate. Um, you know, about a cup or so per person is fine. Out here, real quick. All right, see, it's that the rice cooker is keeping it nice and hot and warm, right? And I'm not worried about white on white because my sauce has color to it. Right. I've got to tell you that this smells amazing. So, if you like seafood, you like spice. Um, if you're not a huge fan of shrimp, swap it out. Put some chicken in there, right? But you just want to make sure that that chicken's cut in some fairly small pieces so it'll be able to cook all the way through. Um, and definitely check the inside of it to make sure that it's not raw, right? And that it is cooked properly. All right. I'm going to grab a spoon here. Now, the rice on the plate, right? That's your base. Then we're going to add our shrimp. Turn the heat off on my pan over there. I'm going to show you this finished dish. All right. Shrimp, you want a little bit of everything on there. All right. Make sure you scoop them down really good. Get those veggies. Get that sauce. Right. That sauce has a lot of flavor to it. Puddle around, right? You got any little spots you don't like? Take a clean towel, right? That's a good little chef trick there. Make sure it's clean towel though. Okay. Now we're gonna take some of these green onions on top. A little bit of color, right? A little bit of brightness to the green, and then with that parsley, and we're just gonna give that a nice little sprinkle. And that's just because it's that nice darker shade of green. Intentionally putting it to the outside, right? This is what we call chefing it up. Right. And that gives you a beautiful finished plate, right? So when you're doing things, you know, like photography and stuff too, you know, taking a picture, you know, using a square plate, taking it at an angle, things like that, um, will give you a really nice finished dish, okay? So that's your Creole shrimp and rice. Is it uses a lot of ingredients. Right, lots of parts and pieces go into this, so it is a good idea to get all your meats and pots ready. Right, have everything out and ready to go, so that way when you're ready to start chopping, slicing, dicing, right, that everything can go right into the pan fairly quickly, and you don't have to stop and go look for things, um, because this dish does finish quickly. Um, once you get it going, it's about 20 minutes total, uh, but you want to have everything handy, right? Like I said, and then you've got your Creole shrimp. Homage to New Orleans. Man, that looks mad good. Oh my 